Hey guys, me again with another YouTube video, and I probably should have taken a drink of water before starting this one. My voice is probably going to be really sore by the time I wake up tomorrow morning. But, fourth video of the night, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at another DMR sniper rifle. Some people use it as an assault rifle type thing. The h and 417. Took me a while to remember what we were looking at. This was a pretty cool model. There was some really interesting designs that went into this one. This one took a while. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to Alan's Custom Lego. He designed the EOTech that is sitting on the rifle itself, so he deserves the credit for it. So go and subscribe to him. He's got a tutorial for that EOTech as well. I use his scopes and most of his sights and most of my Lego mocks because they're really good. So subscribe to him. So this is a pretty legit model. This took me kind of a little while to do. There was a few things that I had to redesign. Um, like uh, most of it is the same that as the ARAK that I designed, but some of it isn't. So I had to go through and redesign a lot of it. The upper receiver is a complete redesign and it was difficult to do. And that's going to be something that we get into a tad bit more once we start talking about the rifle itself. So we're going to go ahead and close out of the LDD to Provray view and open it up in LDD. All right, so as with all of my models, we're going to go ahead and start with the stock and work our way or to the front of the rifle. So the stock might look a little familiar to you guys. This is actually the stock that was on the M27, except with a few um, aesthetic modifications. I redesigned the butt pad into a kind of like a, a much better looking one, and then redesigned how the cheek rest and things like that worked so that it was more comfortable to the shooter. So. This uses kind of like the basic adjustment system. You would pull down or up on this part and this would drop down. And then you have different positions that you can draw between those five positions on this stock. The butt pad has a really, really nice design to it. As you can see, really nice curve. And then up here, we have two curves. We have the side panel curve here and then another curve up top here so that this just fits like nice and seamlessly into one another. And you have a really, really nice uh, curve to it. Four stud wide buffer tube with a, kind of like a more like a six stud wide uh, stock, even though uh, this is like four studs here. And then there's like a, a bracket piece that uh, holds the things on the bottom part here. The bottom part here where these uh, slope bricks are six studs and then it goes down into four and then two down here. So. And then we have our lower receiver. The lower receiver, like I said, is basically the ARAK's lower receiver, except with a few modifications. First modification that I did was the grip. The grip here is mostly the same, except this is all flat, has a little bit of a different angle on the bottom here. And then it has more of a hump in the, the back strap. So instead of being like a straight come down, down thing, it kind of curves out this way and then curves back in this way. So. That's basically the only thing changed there. Trigger and trigger guard are the same. Magazine release and the shroud over it are the same. The ambidextrous fire selector is the same, except there would be no full auto. I don't know why it's still there. Don't know why it's still there on this side either. Magazine release on this side is the same as well. The bolt catch was changed just a bit. It was dropped down into the middle and not way up here. Magwell is changed. The Magwell is now two studs extended out this way to accommodate an eight stud wide magazine. This uses um, 10 round box magazines. This is a 20 rounder. Uh, this is a two stud wide with plates on the side and then four studs on the bottom of the rubber pieces. I don't like the looks of this magazine at all. I really wish I changed it. Uh, it just it doesn't look good with uh, the gaps that you see there. So. This a little bit of pixel art here. This is the H and K logo. Really interesting. This was kind of fun to do. It looks really nice. You can see it in the the rendered image that it um uh, it looks really nice. I, I like it. 
is definitely unique to this model. I don't see very many people doing kind of like a, a pixel art type thing on their model. So it's pretty interesting to have that there. The upper receiver is what took the most time. This is a complete redesign. Uh, this uses these bricks here as uh, slopes, um, these cheese wedges. So it's like a very subtle slope coming out. That was hard to do. You can't just make the receiver six studs wide and then do that because it's also being done here on the bottom. Um, the way I did this was, I'll, I'll probably be able to see or show you guys how I did it with this one. As you can see, there's this piece sticking out of the model over here. And then on the other side of this are these pieces here. These are the incest. I just realized what I said. These are the recessed version of the side bracket pieces. And the reason that you have to use these is that this brick, if you use the if you use this on the inside per se, where it kind of curves down here on the bottom or where it connects to the receiver on this side would actually be sticking out because this is a flush fit with the in or the recessed uh, side bracket pieces. If you use the other ones, there's a gap between it. So that that's the reason I had to use the recessed ones. Um, so that's how I did the receiver. So it, it's really nice. It looks really good. So I, I'm kind of proud of how I did that. I've done a normal or multitude of those types of things. And this is probably one of the best ones. I think the, the Shrike um, and the Beowulf, or not the Beowulf, the uh, Sabretooth are probably like the better version of the upper receivers. But I wanted to try something new and this is what came out of it. So it looks really nice. So I'm pretty proud of this one. This has the Ford Assist on it. Right here, standard Ford Assist design of mine. And then it has the brass deflector here. These, for some reason, these brass deflectors are higher up on the um, the real life thing. Most M4s are kind of down here in the middle, but these are really high up here. So I had to do that. You have your really, really big dust cover, which opens up, revealing your shell ejection port on the inside here. Real big shell ejection port. Charging handles like that of a standard M4 back here. And as you can see, it has the red uh, locking thing. This locks into the receiver up here so your charging handle doesn't accidentally uh, come undone when the bolt um, recoils because they're, they're kind of connected but kind of not. Uh, your charging handle stays forward because of the bolt pressure on it. So when your bolt is coming back after shooting, that frees up your charging handle to move back into your face and you don't want that to happen. So they put these locks on the side of it. This side as well, you can see it. And for some reason, some M4s have this weird looking, kind of like a, a square sticking out of it. So I kept that up here as well. Really nice. Another interesting design that I wanted to do that um, kind of didn't work because of the, the restraints or something like that. But I wanted to design all these, these panels on the side sideways using these bricks here, the like the hollow ones in the middle, because then I would have enough room to do the barrel all the way down through the uh, middle of it. Unfortunately, I could not do that because these are six studs, and the amount of room that I had here to make the handguard in line with everything else look nice is only five studs. So I had to use the normal uh, slope pieces, but it still looks really nice. As you can see, it's got the vent holes here, here, and here. And then the rail system on the side here is three studs, bottom here, three studs, this side, three studs, and then along the top here is three studs as well. So I was able to keep uh, all the rail systems on it and whatnot in uh, the same studs so they look uh, better. So that's really nice. Um, and then we have our barrel and standard muzzle brake, real simple looks really nice and I think a lot of you might say well that HK417 looks really short it looks more like an HK416 what are you talking about this is the HK416 CQB model there is such a thing that's why I did not put a scope on this model because the DMR sniper rifle version of the HK417 has a lot longer barrel and a lot lot longer handguard I think it has like a 
full 24 inch barrel. I think the CQB has like an 18 inch barrel on it. So I have a little bit of leeway there. That's why this one has the EOTech on it. This is more of the kind of like the assault rifle uh, 417 almost. This would be basically a spotter's weapon in a sniper team. Your sniper would be using pretty much what I had last video, the M21, except the upgraded M14 EBR, now the EBR chassis of things. Um, whereas your spotter, who's going to be keeping the hide secure, basically where you're hiding at secure, would need something that's semi-automatic or fully automatic. A lot of uh, spotters would use M4s, but if your spotter is also engaging in long distance shooting as well, then something like the HK 417 or the uh, HK G28, uh, which is a designated DMR, um, would be able to do something like that. So that's pretty much it for this video. This was a real simple model to do. The low receiver didn't take much time, neither did the stock. The only thing that really took up time was the upper receiver design and the handguard design. Uh, those were new and innovative, some uh, different techniques went into doing that. I'm getting a lot better with the whole like sideways studs things, things like that. So that's really interesting, really nice, and I I'm definitely proud of this one. It's not one of the best models, um, but it's not like it'll, my worst. It, it looks really good, so that's what I'm really proud of. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to comment rate, and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. My voice is getting real sore, so I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Thanks, guys.